I want to talk about the sensitivity that we need to have concerning this topic of false prophets and the seductiveness of being drawn in and how easy it is and how careful we need to be. And then, how do we know the difference? How can we be careful? How can we distinguish, you know, somebody who's on the right side from the wrong side when it's such a blurry line, when it's such a close mimicking counterfeit that it's hard to tell. How many of you have experienced that in your life where you found out that someone or something you believed was wrong and someone you trusted was false and you had to realize that, wow, I was easily seduced, easily suckered. I mean, it's humbling to admit that. To admit that you fell for these Copelands and, and Jonathan Klecks and Todd White's brothers and sisters, I fell for all of them too. I followed everything Todd White said. I followed everything Jonathan Kleck did. I loved him. I like him. Unique, charismatic. I loved it. And then I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard. Thank God for that, isn't it? Isn't it the grace of God that pulls us from the fire? Isn't it the grace of God that opens up our eyes? You can't do that. You can't do that. People are blinded by the Satan. People are blinded by Satan. You can't see on your own. You can't open up your own eyes. You can't open up your own ears. Only God can do that. It's grace, brothers and sisters. It's grace, saved by grace. So I'm gonna go through the process of what happened to me with what I've been learning and following with Todd White here a little bit and share that with you so that you may pick up on what I went through and in your own life, maybe you're dealing with others out there that you can't quite tell whether they're on the right page or the wrong page with God and you're questioning it, you need to be, you need to be very suspicious a lot of times. Listen, it's better to be suspicious these days and to be extra cautious these days than to immediately submit yourself to believing what these people say. When I see a prophet or a somebody that's a teacher, I'm already on guard. I've learned this the hard way, brothers and sisters, in this generation. I've learned already my ears are trained now to listen carefully to the details of what people say. Because the big things, the things you have to check box, oh, he said that, check. He said that, check. If you go to the Jehovah Witness website on the front page, it's check, check, sounds good to me. If you go to the Mormon page or any other page, the SDA page, and right on the page, it's got all the big check marks. Jesus is the Son of God. All right, they're good. Je Blood of Jesus. Yeah, that's good too. Yeah, check box, check box, check box. That's all good. That's the big macro things everybody says, everybody needs to hear to validate whether it's true or not. And yes, we got that. But the devil is in the details. By the time you read page after page and page and doctrine after doctrine, you get down on the 50th page and you listen and you're hours into it and days into it, you spend time into it, then you start hearing things, hearing things that are not of God. It takes time. You can't see it right away. So before I start going, yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I trust. Yeah, I follow. Yeah, I support. Before I get invested, I'm already listening for the devil in the details. Now, after 50 years, 50 years old, 52, after seeing my favorite preachers turn their backs on God, after heartache and disappointment and embarrassment, I finally learned to proceed with caution. Be very, very skeptical and very cautious and very on guard. Can I get an amen?